The evolution of pedagogical theories has accompanied humanity since antiquity. Let's think about how much the meiotic method, which was developed by Socrates with his disciples, can still inspire us today. Throughout history, pedagogy was able to benefit from the contributions of many different disciplines. Let's think about psychology, philosophy, but also neurobiology and anthropology. They all contributed to the creation of such diverse educational theories that can still be a source of inspiration today. Just in more recent times, we will all have heard of Montessori and Vygotsky, who actually made their contributions at the beginning of the 20th century. So they are already a century old, but still a very interesting source of inspiration. Continuing on in the 90s, we can mention Dewey, Gagné, Skinner, but also Bloom, Brunner, Kolb, Kelly, Bandura, so many figures, up to the more recent Beeks, Siemens, Downs, people you might have heard mentioned when exploring the world of education and who will help us in our next steps. To orient ourselves more easily within the wealth of pedagogical theory, we will enlist the help of Greeno, Collins and Resnick, who many years ago proposed an organization of pedagogical theories from three fundamental perspectives, associative, cognitive and situative. We'll start by exploring the first, the associative approach. The associative perspective also includes behavioral theories and it basically starts from the idea that knowledge is a well-organized system of connections between mental units and behaviors. Consequently, learning is seen primarily as the modification of observable behaviors through reactions, stimulus and response. Consequently, in this perspective, the use of incentives that reinforce the positive behaviors and any disincentives that discourage inappropriate behaviors is considered a winning strategy. The key factors in the learning process on which the associative perspective proposes to act for the modification of behaviors are the creation of observable reactions, stimulus and response and the use of reinforcing strategies, in particular of positive behaviors. This vision has been largely criticized in time because it has been deemed too mechanistic, too fragmentary and too teacher-centric. It appears to be a perspective in which the role of students is downgraded to the role of a subject that must react in automatic way to a system of stimulus response proposed by the educator. Precisely because of these vision characteristics, this perspective has been fairly marginalized within the debate. But we will see shortly how some educational models draw from this matrix that can help us in drawing some interesting inspiration. The second educational perspective that Greeno, Collins and Resnick proposed is the so-called cognitive one. Famous theories such as the constructivist theory are part of this perspective. What does the cognitive perspective tell us? The knowledge is indeed the availability of structures, information and processes that I can use to solve problems, manage situations, even complex ones, that imply reasoning, solving problems, understanding and using language in the most appropriate way. Learning is, in, in other words, generated by the involvement of the student in the recursive processes that bring together, in an integrated way, experiences, solutions to problems, combination of information, consequent abstractions. 
In the cognitive perspective, therefore, learning is considered basically the modification of internal cognitive structures, the result of a mental activity stimulated by experience, potentially within a social context. It becomes clear from this consideration that the role of the teacher is definitely different compared to the one we just saw in the associative perspective. The educator becomes the subject aiming at activating the context of experiential stimulus in which students can build the modification of their system of knowledge, abilities and competencies and then act in the solution of complex problems. The third perspective on which we encourage you to try and map the world of educational theories is the so-called situative perspective. In other words, the one where knowledge is seen as a system distributed among people and their environments. Other individuals, seen as bringers of knowledge, are naturally part of these environments. But we are also talking about physical objects such as libraries, books, magazines, where knowledge physically resides. And though the digital world can be accessed both in terms of content from various sources and in terms of structural content with a broader learning goal. For example, massive open online courses that are surely a source of usable, organized and qualified content. In this perspective, learning consists precisely in the activation of the participation process of single students and groups within the environment. So, as you can see, this is a perspective where learning is completely different compared to the two we have just seen. Let's sum up now. In the construction of strategies to guide our teaching and learning experience, we can be helped by pedagogical theories, and in particular, by their operational use within the teaching practice, the pedagogical models or pedagogical frameworks. However, to begin our exploration of pedagogical frameworks, we need to try to orient ourselves in the vast world of pedagogy, and to this aim, we will suggest three different perspectives. The first is the so-called associative perspectives. Its main focus is the activation of stimulus response that modify behaviors through positive reinforcement. Another approach is the cognitive perspective, which focuses on the construction of strategies that recursively involve the student in processes based on experiences, abstractions, cooperation with peers, to modify the internal structure of knowledge. The last one is the situational perspective. It starts from the idea that knowledge is an attribute shared among individuals and their environments. So it focuses on the activation of students as a subject capable of drawing and activating knowledge from environments, physical objects and digital world. Mm -hmm.